Hey, what's up? Today we're building an entire Omni display case starting from complete scratch. Welcome to the New York City Design Studio. My name is Austin. I'm one of the lead engineers on the Omni project here and I'm excited to take you through it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Omni is a fully modular 3D printable display case for your miniatures, your 3D prints, your collectibles, etc. You name it and Omni can display it. Now everything that I talk about in this video will be linked in the description. Let's jump right into it. Here is a brief overview of the design. I highly, highly recommend watching this portion of the video right here as it will simplify everything else. So Omni is essentially split into three main pieces. We have a rear bezel, a front bezel, and the door. Now the rear bezel and the front bezel are connected with modular depth pieces and the door is simply connected with magnets. All that we're going to be doing is connecting the rear bezel and the front bezel and the door. And there we have our Omni. Now I know I'm oversimplifying it, but the other things that we need to know, front and rear bezel can be connected with either modular depth pieces or with a single depth piece. Now the single depth piece is for our standard sizes. Basically one single depth piece equals four modular pieces. Now lastly, the front and rear bezels can be made to accommodate a variety of shelf options. This includes 3D printed shelves, one quarter inch acrylic shelves, or one eighth inch acrylic shelves. Now that is everything, all of the basics covered when it comes to building our Omni. If it sounds like a lot, don't worry, we're gonna go through all of it together right now, starting with step one. That is to determine the size of the Omni that you wanna make. Now I recommend choosing one of our standard sizes. When you open up your file delivery folder, you will see the standard square options and the standard rectangular options. My personal favorite, highest recommended, is the 330 by 330 millimeter square version, and that's what we'll be making today. If you're making a custom size Omni, go ahead, jump into the make your own size folder, and there you will see a PDF with some instructions on how to do that. Essentially, if you're making your own size, all you need to know, there's always gonna be just four corner pieces, and then the rest, the length, the width, and the depth pieces, print as many as you want. I hope that makes sense. If not, just keep following along. It will all make sense shortly, I promise. Step number two is to pick your shelves. Okay, we've included options for 3D printed shelves, one quarter inch acrylic, and one eighth inch acrylic. I highly recommend either using the 3D printed shelves or the one quarter inch. You go down to that thin one eighth of an inch acrylic. Uh, if you're using a large Omni and heavy models, you will see it flex in the middle. So save those for maybe if you're just making the smallest Omni version. For this video, I will show you them all. I'll put all the links below. We're gonna do the entire thing. Let's just do it. Step number three is let's get printing. So inside of the file folders, you will see each file name also has the quantity uh, associated with it. So for example, one of them that I have is the bezel screw cap underscore 12 QTY. For that, we print 12 of them, pretty straightforward. And within that file folder, the last thing is to make sure that you choose the file corresponding to the shelf type. So what we're gonna have is the standard size, 330 by 330, 3D printable shelf, and then within there, all we gotta do is print all of those files. Today, I'm gonna be 3D printing all of these on the Prusa MK4 that you can see behind me, and I have a Prusa XL behind you there. So I, I'm gonna fire up all these machines, get a nice little time lapse going so we can keep an eye on it. And I will note that the final file delivery does include a bunch of stuff about printer settings and materials. Uh, spoiler alert, if you print with maybe 15 to 20% infill, you use PLA and something like 0.2 to 0.32 layer height, uh, you'll have a really nice Omni. So let's go ahead, let's get that rear bezel printing first. I actually have it in front of me here because I've already done it, but let's run through it. Let's do the whole build from start to finish. Let's go. Okay, so here we have all of the rear bezel pieces. Now, like I said, the rear bezel piece is the very back. I'm actually gonna show you it specifically on the screen right here. Don't worry, I'll put up a screen recording so you can see it. Woo. But what we have is, if I go like this, let's bring this up and just do a quick walkthrough of the design. So, if I show you all these, these are the depth modular pieces right here. You can see 
All of these guys here are all depth modular pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I will hide all of these. Next up, we have the front bezel, which is right here. We don't need to worry about that right now either. And we also have the rear bezel. That's what we are going to be making. Okay, so here we have the rear bezel piece. Now I know you can't see it from there, so I will do a little screen recording of this too. But this is the piece that we are going to make right now. Like I said, this is the rear bezel. So just to let it all make sense, if I put the door on here, we can see that this is the door. We'll be making that soon. From the intro, I said rear bezel, front bezel, door. So here we have rear bezel. In between them, like I said, goes all of those depth modular pieces. So I'm gonna make those visible right now. And now you can kind of see how the Omni is coming together. So that is a piece like this here. Let's go ahead and let's actually build the rear bezel piece so that we can get started. Okay, so getting started with the rear bezel, it pretty much just consists of four corner pieces, which we can see here, and eight of the modular kind of length pieces that you'll see right here. Now they do have some light support removal required, but again, if you're not super confident with supports, just use the recommended settings and they will snap off super easily. So let's go ahead and get these ones built. Just so that we don't wanna see the screws once it's up on the wall, we can go ahead and we can just insert the uh, cover pieces here. Oh, there we go. Now I did use a mixture of uh, black and then sparkle black. So you'll see kind of actually all throughout the uh, Omni box that I'm making, there is the sparkle black and just the black, but nonetheless, it is the same. I'm gonna put all the covers on now and then let's get on to the next piece. Now, one other thing that I should know is this is just with the fasteners. I have no super glue on this and like it, it, it is rock solid. So depending on what you're putting in here, it should be absolutely more than enough. Now, lastly, for the rear bezel are the actual backing pieces to it. Now these, you can go ahead and just put in like this. You don't actually have to insert them from the top, but if you did print this on a large printer so that instead of four pieces, it was just one piece like it is you can see here, then you'd wanna actually slide that in from the top before you put all the screws on. So these parts are also pretty easy. You can just insert them like this. And then once they're all in place, don't do it yet, but at the very end, I like to actually glue the back together so you can't uh, see where the two pieces are connected. And then again, just as a little disclaimer, I printed some of it in Sparkle Black and some of it in Galaxy Black, so uh, it's not gonna match perfectly, but nonetheless, that is the rear bezel complete. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this here, and then let's move on to the next piece. Okay, so next up, we are going to make the door. So we've done the entire rear bezel. Now we're gonna work on the door. You can see it on the screen there. The door assembly is the exact same as the rear bezel assembly. All that we're gonna do is put it together and then again, go ahead, use the fasteners and it will look exactly like the rear bezel. However, with the door, uh, once we get the bottom and both of the sides made, we're gonna stop because the acrylic for the door is actually gonna slide in. So I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, now our door is almost done. You can see that I have the two main pieces of it right here and make sure that you don't attach it down just yet because the acrylic is actually going to slide in to the front section right here. You'll notice that there are these grooves that run along the front door. So we're gonna go ahead and slide the acrylic in there. Now, you can order your acrylic online. I will put a link in the description if you wanna order it direct or you can go ahead and cut the acrylic yourself. I actually have a big laser cutter there, but I'm gonna go through and cut the acrylic here manually so that you can see that process as well. That way you can just order some acrylic off of Amazon or from a local supplier. They are, you can get acrylic pretty much everywhere. So if you wanna make it yourself, this is how you do that part. Okay, so here we have a really large piece of 1 8 inch acrylic. This is what I'm going to be cutting the front acrylic window piece from. Okay, I'm at this part here now where you can see the back of the office. Now, full disclosure, the office is usually pretty clean. It's just, we were just moving in, so there's stuff everywhere. This is a new space, so if you're wondering why it looks so bad, that's why. Uh, now, this was just on Amazon. I think the 1 8 stuff is quite cheap, so if you do wanna grab uh, your acrylic off of Amazon instead of actually buying it from a proper acrylic store or from the website that I put in the description. You can do that. This is the big sheet of 1 8 inch acrylic. Now it does have a little covering over top of it so that that's why it's not crystal clear. So let's go ahead, let's get this cut. Okay, so when it comes time to cut the acrylic, again, we're cutting for the 320 by 320 millimeter Omni. Now, 
the DXF files, as well as you'll see a PDF that shows the dimensions of what the acrylic should be. I'm looking at it right now. I know you can't see it, but it's actually 321 millimeters by 321 millimeters. So all I'm gonna do on the acrylic is I'm gonna draw a big square that's 321 by 321. And then we're going to score the acrylic with either a knife or a scoring tool. And then all we do is we actually just snap the acrylic to that size. And especially because it's one eighth of an inch, it's super easy to do. Let's do it now. All right, so now we have a 321 by 321 millimeter square. We can even just lightly put this together to sort of double check that it will fit uh, within those dimensions. Let's do that now. And if I look at it from the top, I can see that that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut. You wanna do it a few times, make sure that there's like a decent groove in it before you actually go ahead and snap it. It's not a good sound. All right, so once you have scored it, you can go ahead and actually snap it. Now I'm gonna do it the fancy way just because I already have these tools at the office. They're definitely not mandatory, um, maybe recommended, but to be honest, like I said, I've had to make quite a few of these cases so that we could get all the dimensions and stuff perfect for you guys. Uh, and you can just kind of snap it, but I do recommend just putting on the corner of a table like this, and then you'll see we snap it and we get a perfect cut. Now, because there is a covering on the acrylic, let me just bring this down so that I can show you. You'll notice that it's kind of just hanging there. That's just because of the plastic that is over top of the acrylic so that you don't scratch the actual acrylic. Uh, so I'm gonna get this off of there and then I'll show you. Just to show you that you can kind of just snap it pretty easy without any tools. Just make sure that you line it up with the corner of a desk and then give it a good and it will break perfectly at 90 degrees. And then make sure you got a little knife or a tool, cut the actual acrylic free from the top. And here we have our top piece or our uh, front window. Okay, now that we have our acrylic, we can actually go ahead and peel off the plastic cover for it. You can see how nice this looks. Now I am gonna get a bunch of fingerprints on it, but we will clean it at the end anyways. And then all we gotta do is go ahead, slide the acrylic in here and then put on the top piece and our front will be done. So, all right, now you can see that we can actually slide on our acrylic as follows and then put on the top piece here. You can see here, it's on there perfect. We just gotta put the nuts and bolts in and we are good to go. So I'm gonna do that right now so I don't move. Just one more and then the front piece here is almost done. We actually do still have to put the magnets in, but I just wanna show you this part here. And there we go. This looks awesome. This is our front panel for our 330 by 330 Omni. So we now have the rear bezel and the front one. Let's go ahead and let's put the magnets in here now so that it does just kind of clip on and clip off with those magnets. Okay, the last step with the front cover is to actually put the magnets inside of it. Now, we have to be careful with the magnets. Please do not glue these in until you test it. I'm gonna show you how I recommend doing it. But again, just don't glue them in until you have tested the polarity of the magnets, because if you mess that up, then you'll go to put the cover on or you'll go to put the front door on and then it will actually not work because if the magnets are opposing each other, you won't be able to put the door on. So, easiest way to do this, take your stack of magnets and let me just put the camera down here. What I like to do is to pull them off of the stack in the same way for each one. So here we go, and I'm gonna lie this one down flat. So that's gonna go in that corner. Same thing, this magnet here for this corner. And all I'm doing is not flipping the orientation of it. So same thing for these two. Again, you can see how strong these are. You do have to be very careful with them. This one goes here, and then finally this last corner. Now, when you get to this step, you have two options. You can either use the caps for the magnets. So we can go ahead, slide the magnet into its spot here, and then we can go ahead and put the cap in there. Uh, or you can super glue it. I recommend honestly just doing both, but do not glue it until you're 100% sure that the polarity is correct. Once that's done, our whole front is complete. Okay, so I did go ahead and actually glue the magnets in. Now I did spill a little bit of glue on the screen. I don't know if you can even see it, but there is some right there. So do be really careful when you are gluing things, but that there is our front piece completely done. So next up, 
we need to do the front bezel. Again, this is the front cover. We did the rear bezel. Now let's go ahead and let's actually do the front bezel. Okay, by this point, we probably get the drill. We have the four corner pieces and then the eight other pieces. We're gonna assemble those into the 330 by 330 square and then we're gonna put the Omni all the way together. Okay, now that we have our front bezel assembly complete, the only thing left to do is to actually put the magnets into these spots here with the front bezel assembly. Now, this part is also super important because we need to, again, make sure that the polarity is correct. So the easiest way to do this is to flip it around and then let's go ahead and let's take our actual front section and let's attach it to the front bezel. Once it's attached, we can flip that around and we can see now it is here as one piece. And this again is the location where we're going to where we're going to be putting the magnets. So grab your stack of magnets, take one off, and make sure that whatever way you are putting it inside of there, that it is attracted to the other side. So I can see this magnet right here won't go in, and that means that I have to flip it around, and then we'll see that it goes and it actually sticks in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I usually just glue these in. You can also use 3M tape. Once you get all of the magnets put in, it should look like this in the corners, but don't worry, this is actually facing away from us so you don't see it when it's on the case anyways. So now we have the rear bezel, our front bezel, and our cover. The only thing that's left to do is to put on the actual modular depth pieces. So let's add those. And then there is also those uh, last few acrylic windows. Let's put those on and then we're actually done and our whole Omni is built. The whole thing looks and feels super solid right now. So this is super exciting. Let's do it. Okay, now it's time to add in the modular depth pieces. So let me show you what I mean. This here is how we control the depth of our Omni display case. We can add as many of these or as few of these as we want. Additionally, there is the stock standard pieces that I like to use right here. One of these is equal to four of the individual pieces, exact same dimensions. This one is just one piece. Now, if you use the one piece, you do want to actually glue it on. If you use the four pieces, the modular pieces, you can use the fasteners. So whatever you like, uh, this part's a little bit confusing. So the first time that you do it, I recommend just following the PDF. But all that we're really doing is we're using the sort of variation two of our screws. And on the outside here, we put one of the long screws through and then on the back of the piece, there's a place for another hex nut. And then all that we do is stack them and stack them to whatever size you really want. Now, like I mentioned, it also comes with our standard size here. So this is the one, I mean, I'm gonna use one of each for the Omni that we're building now, but like I said, it's up to you how you wanna do it. Uh, as I mentioned, if you're building something that's really, really heavy, I recommend using the screws just cause it is a little bit safer. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I just installed the modular depth pieces here and they are rock solid. Uh, for those who were commenting on the Kickstarter campaign and stuff, wondering if they were gonna be strong enough, I assure you that they will hold up. It is a unit. There's lots of fasteners in there. Uh, I highly recommend just using the modular ones, follow the PDF and install the corner pieces. Again, you can make it to any size you want, but I do, uh, I think that four looks best, which is why we made the standard size with four. So here's this, we're almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the other three pieces and then we're gonna install the LEDs, the side acrylics, and then we're actually just gonna throw the front on and we're all done. You can order these already pre-cut. There is a link in the description. We partnered up with a company here in the US who does kind of bulk laser cutting. So we got some pretty wicked deals there if you are looking for those. So let's go ahead, let's put these windows in and then the LEDs and then the front panel, and then we are actually done and we can uh, light this thing up. So let's see how it goes. All right, so at this point, what I recommend doing is getting out our LED kit. This is a brand new one here, just off of Amazon. They're cool, they come with all the different colors, the remote, etc. it's all set up. But the reason that we wanna do this now is because we're actually going to thread just the LED strip through the back, and then there's actually a little uh, housing unit on the back where we can put the sort of bigger hardware components just to keep everything super clean. So I'll try and do a couple close-ups to show that now. And we've built, you'll notice on the module depth pieces that there's a hole that runs through them. We're gonna insert this from the bottom. It's gonna come up through the modular depth piece and then it is going to go on top of the front bezel. There's this flat area here. I'll put it up in the camera. You can see this part right here is where we're gonna line the LED. So I'll do a, a little close up film of that so you can see it a little bit better and then we're almost done. Okay, so we can see the LED strip here and it is going through the modular depth piece. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this LED strip and we are going to attach it 
to this part right here of the front bezel all the way around. Okay, so now that the LED is all the way through and we can see it's back around, it's also coming out through the modular depth piece as we discussed earlier. All we gotta do is to flip this one over here and then just to keep things super clean, we want to wrap this around the little peg that's in there. All right, so now that it's all wound up, you can see that we have the LED roll, the part that is going to plug into our power adapter, and then we have the LED that goes in through the bottom of our Omni, comes out the top and goes all the way around our front bezel. We are pretty much done. All that we gotta do now is connect our uh, front bezel to the depth mod to the modular depth pieces and then we can go ahead and connect the leds to the back um, i did take out these back pieces which i am going to put back in there before i put the omni on the wall and there is also a little hook for the uh, led power cables here that we can attach to the back to the omni again just to keep everything super super clean all right, so I put the front on, we have the rear bezel, the modular pieces, the front bezel, and now finally we can attach the last little accessory piece that is just to hold the LED hardware here. Let me show you so we can see this piece right here. This is gonna get attached to the back and then our LED piece kind of just slides in like that. Keeps things super clean. You can go ahead and uh, honestly, I would just super glue this piece on. It slides in pretty much anywhere on the back here. All right, so this is what the back of the Omni display case looks like. You can see here, we have our little carrying thing for the light hardware. I then just put the roll attached to the back. It's plugged in right here. And remember, all of this is gonna be against the actual wall anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then finally, our power cord. All we gotta do is pull the power cable out like this. It will thread through right here so that it's not pinched up against the wall. And we are pretty much done. The last thing is shelves. Now, like I said, we have the quarter inch, the one eighth of an inch and the 3D printed shelves. So let's actually put this thing uh, either up on the wall or set display somewhere and I'll grab the shelves and put some miniatures on it. All right, I am just pulling off the plastic for the one quarter inch acrylic. This is fresh off of the laser cutter. Everything is looking awesome so far. And I'm pretty confident that this is gonna fit. Let's check it out, okay. Here we go. And it is perfect. Boom, that's what it looks like with a shelf. And then here is what it will look like. Boom, it looks awesome. And, and we can actually plug it in and turn on the lights. I wanna wait till the end to do that because that's kind of like the big reveal, but everything is spot on. The only thing I don't like about it is that I spilled glue on the front acrylic. So I don't know if you can see it, but there is uh, a little mark on there. The rest looks awesome. So that's it for right now. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna come in tomorrow, put it up on the wall, do some nice pictures and show off the 1 8 inch acrylic as well as the 3D printed shelves, and then that's it for Omni. All right, we're back. So I do have the quarter inch acrylic shelf sitting right here. I actually just laser cut another one because it's my preference to use the acrylic shelves, but we also have this 3D printed shelf that I started putting together here. This is our prototype design. I just had one sitting around, but I wanna use it to show you what it looks like and kind of how strong it is. If you are using heavy models, like I said, go with the one quarter inch acrylic or the 3D printed shelf. Both of these are super solid options. All right, we're just about done now. It's time to put on the wall. Now I do recommend using a level to do this. You'll notice that there are two holes in each corner there. You might not be able to see it on the camera, but there are two holes. From there, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some wood screws into the wall. You can use drywall screws, whatever you think is sufficient for what you're working with. Let's go ahead, let's do that now. All right, now it's probably not the easiest to see. but we are all set up. Here's where I'll cue the actual uh, professional footage from the Kickstarter campaign that was used so you can see exactly how it looks, but that is pretty sweet. <laughs> 